Hello, my name is Hussam Adin. I have prepared this presentation, Clinical Anatomy of the Rectum and Anal Canal. This session focuses on describing the anatomy of the rectum and anal canal and using this anatomical knowledge to explain clinically correlated issues. This is the presentation's map. The large intestine consists of cecum, ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, sigmoid colon, rectum, and anal canal. The word rectum originates from the studies on animals to describe the distal part of the gut. This is its location, as seen here in this human cadaver. It begins in front of the third sacral vertebra, and it ends in front of the tip of the coccyx, and it curves along the anterior concavity of the sacrum. This is called the sacral flexure of the rectum. The anorectal flexure is caused by the pubrectalis portion of the levator and eye muscles. The peritoneum covers the anterior and lateral surfaces of the first third of the rectum, only the anterior surface of the middle third, leaving the lower third devoid of peritoneum. This arrangement is the same in both males and females. The muscular coat of the rectum consists of inner circular layer and outer longitudinal layer. The rectum deviates to the left and then returns to the median plane, creating three lateral flexures. These flexures can be seen here in this radiograph. The transverse rectal folds are made of mucous membrane and the circular muscle layer. They are semicircular, they are permanent, they are called also Houston valves after John Houston. Now we know about the anorectal flexure, the lateral flexures, and the sacral flexure. It's important during proctosigmoidoscopy to consider them. Proctosigmoidoscopy is a procedure for visual examination of the anus, rectum, and distal sigmoid colon. It may involve the use of proctoscope, sigmoidoscope, or a colonoscope. It can provide a clear image of the mucosa through a video camera attached to the end of the scope. The camera connects to a computer which can store and print color images selected during the procedure. The arterial relations of a female rectum are the rectouterine pouch, the uterus, vagina. In this sagittal MRI, we can see anterior, posterior, the same structures, urine bladder, uterus, and the rectum. The anterior relations of a male rectum are the rectovesical pouch, urinary bladder, and prostate. In this coronal section, we can see the same structures, anterior, posterior, prostate, and this is the rectum. Now we know the anatomical relations of the rectum. It is useful to talk about digital rectal examination. It's a procedure that provides access to related structures. The doctor can identify several conditions pertaining to rectum and anal canal, prostate and seminal vesicles, urinary bladder, and perineum. Now let's move to the next part of this presentation. The anal canal is the last and the shortest part of the GIT. The anatomical relations in a female pelvis are tip of coccyx, anacoxygeal ligament posteriorly, and the perineal body and the vagina anteriorly. In the male pelvis, the relations are the same, except that anteriorly, instead of the vagina, there is the membranous part of the urethra and the bulb of the penis. Laterally, the anal canal is related to esquivenal fossae on both sides. The anal sphincters are two types. The external anal sphincter, skeletal muscle, is voluntary, innervated by the inferior rectal nerve. It consists of three parts, deep, superficial and subcutaneous. The internal anal sphincter composed of smooth muscle, it's involuntary and receives autonomic innervation. Here is a better look at the three parts of the external anal sphincter, the deep, the superficial and the subcutaneous. The mucous membrane forms a number of vertical folds, the anal columns. The anal sinuses are ferrules that separate the anal columns. The columns are joined by the anal valves. The pectinate line separates the anal canal 
into two halves. The upper half is lipocolumnar epithelium and is sensitive only to stretch, while the lower half is lined by stratified squamous epithelium and is sensitive to pain, temperature, touch, and pressure. Now let's move to the next part of this presentation. The pectinate line separates the rectum and the upper part of the anal canal from the lower part. The upper part receives blood supply from the superior rectal vessels while the lower part from the inferior rectal vessels. The lymphatic drainage of the upper part is to the pararectal lymph nodes and the lower part is to the superficial inguinal lymph node. The superior rectal vein drains to the portal circulation while the inferior rectal vein drains to the systemic circulation. This is where they form a portosystemic anastomosis. Now think about this. Now let's move to the last part of this presentation. Hemorrhoids are varicosities of some mucosal veins. There are two types, internal and external. So internal hemorrhoids are related to the superior rectal vein and located proximal to the pectinate line while the external hemorrhoids are related to the inferior rectal vein and they are located distal to the pectinate line. The superior rectal vein is the most dependent part of the portal circulation and it's valveless. Now think about this. In chronically constipated person, the anal mucosa may be torn by heart feces leading to anal fissure. It is usually located in the posterior midline, inferior to the anal valves. Fistula is an abnormal communication between two epithelial surfaces. That's all. Thank you for watching this presentation.